Hi, welcome back to History and Philosophy of Science and Medicine. I'm Matt Brown. Today we're going to talk a little bit about trust in science. So um, let's th let's think about what it what it means for uh, to to use science in decision making, public policy, or just personal medical decision making. For example, um, it requires number one that you know what the science says. Right, you have to have the scientific information available to you, and you have to understand it, right? Okay, number two, you have to see that that, um, you, have to, you have to trust that scientific information. You have to see that, the, that there are good reasons to believe um, the information that you have and the advice that it's based on. And number three, you have to accept some connection between the information and uh, some, some form of action. Right, so it's not enough for uh, example for scientists to tell us that um, uh, that the, our release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere is causing global warming. Um, we also need to know that that that's a bad thing, and that there's, we should do something to stop that. Right, um, if that information is true, which it is. Um, so we we. We need to we need to be able to connect those things together, right? Um, so when the scientists recommend, for example, that we um, we get vaccinated uh, for measles, mumps, and rubella, or for COVID nineteen, um, number one, we need to know what they're telling us, right? When they tell us that it's safe and effective, and the the risks are this and that, and they're minimal in this and that way, right? Um, and we need to, to trust that they're, they're telling us the truth and that the, they're um, uh, sort of, they're, they're giving us the right advice. And then we need to uh, accept the value judgments um, and other factors that might connect the advice to action, right? Now, um, when, when we have controversies like vaccine hesitancy, or climate change denial, um, where there seems to be a disconnect between the science and the the prescribed actions. This, this all these are these are all these different ways that things could be falling apart. We could not understand what the scientists are saying, right? We could be misinformed in some way. We could believe that that the that really scientists don't know what's going on with global warming or with vaccine safety. We could. Um, uh, have full knowledge of what the scientific consensus is and just not trust it, right? Um, or we could not believe uh, the we we could not believe that um, the recommended action coheres with our with our values, right? So we might, for example, believe that the climate uh, is changing due to our actions, and we might say, well, you know. Five degrees warmer and uh, massive biodiversity loss and ocean rising, that sounds nice, right? Um, I mean, hopefully we don't think that, but, um, but th it's not logically incoherent, right? Um, now, in terms of these disconnects, by and large, when uh, the scientific community and, and those who advocate for um, science-based policies and scientific science-based decision-making, tend to hone in on this first question of misinformation. They tend to think the public is ignorant, scientifically illiterate, uh, and uh, un incapable of, of um, uh, processing the information they've been given, uh, or even misled by um, hostile actors preying on their ignorance. Um, and they have focused a lot of attention on that problem how to better inform the public, how to create better public understanding of science through, um, you know, different ways of presenting the information, sort of infotainment activities and other kinds of things of that sort. Um, now, I'm not going to sit here and say that there is not mis there's not misinformation out there. There aren't, you know, uh, people who, who misunderstand the science. But that in itself... Um, is not the sole situation. And actually, um, public misunderstanding of science is, is less bad than you might think, right? If you look at some of the data out there. Um, now, 
Maya Goldenberg, in the case of vaccines, has argued that this has really missed the mark. It's not so much that uh, people don't understand what the scientists are telling them, don't understand the science. There's some of that, but, but not wholly. The problem is, is that they don't trust the scientists because scientists typically are taking a public health perspective. They're looking at risk in the aggregate and benefit in the aggregate and um, uh, making decisions in, in that way and pre presenting information in that way. But um, what many parents as, as decision makers about childhood vaccinations in particular are worried about is individual risk to their child and whether the risk benefit calculation for their particular child is correct. Um, and there's, there's a host of, of reasons why you might be worried about that. Um, and if you want to find out more information about that, often what you're met with is this, is this um, answer that assumes you're just ignorant, right? Assumes you don't understand what's going on. Assumes that you can't make uh, educated um, decisions about risk. But, you know, as, as Goldenberg points out, right, um, you know, why do you want to put your child at risk, right? Um, uh, that, that seems like bad parenting, right? You want to, you know, okay, maybe the benefits outweigh the risks, but um, who, can, who can explain that to me? How can we weigh those things? That's the kind of information that parents feel that they're not getting, and so they seek it elsewhere, and that's, you know, how they become open to a certain kind of misinformation. You might think about it, um, you know, we could, we, could, we could go back and ask um, Feyerabend, should we trust science, right? Um, Feyerabend might say, look, no, you shouldn't trust science, right? Why? Because trust uh, makes you kind of dependent and, you know, dependent on the sort of interest of the scientists. What you should do is you should be a critical thinker and you should try to understand the science for yourself, and make your own judgments. Well, as Heather Douglas argues, um, that's really that's a that's a lot to ask, right? Um, in fact, we are kind of dependent on the experts in a lot of cases to help us understand things that are quite technical. Um, so, what what we might instead be uh, what we might instead focus on is um, being critical trusters, right? Um, that is, thinking critically about whether um, scientists or the scientific or medical establishment is trustworthy, right? And, you know, one of the things that focusing on trust centers our, our thinking on is, um, you know, that it's, that it's not just about information. It's not a purely epistemic question, right? Um, trust involves not just believing that... Um, uh, the person you're trusting, or in this case, the group that you're trusting, or the institution that you're trusting, is honest, is going to deal truthfully, right? But also that um, they're they're uh, they're going to act with integrity, um, and that that you know they're going to um, respond to your dependence upon them with the appropriate level of of care and concern. Um, you know, you might say that. Um, if you tr you know, if I trust someone to, um, to, to, to dog sit for me, to watch my dogs, right? I not only have to believe that they're competent, you know, they know how to take care of a dog. I also have to believe that they have the, in my interests and the interests of my dogs at heart, right? Um, and that's a, that's an ethical kind of, um, relationship. That's an ethical commitment. Um, and, uh, if, if they are, if I think, you know, they know what to do, but they're, you know, going to be distracted or they're not going to be focused on my, my particular dogs. Maybe they're focused on the, the welfare of dogs in general um, and not the welfare of my particular dogs. I might pick someone else to dog sit, right? Because I want a dog sitter who's going to take care of my dogs, right? Um, and I think it's similar. It's a similar worry um, with some parents and vaccines, right? And so... Um, what, if Goldenberg is right about that, then um, concerns about the public understanding of science really need to be retooled in the direction of um, fostering public trust of science. And that's a two-way street, right? It's not just about um, better communication strategies to suggest trust, 
but also um, it's a, it's about um, making sure that the activities and institutions of science have the right relationship to the public so that they are trustworthy. Um, in some cases, especially with, with modern medicine, uh, there, are real, there are real reasons to worry um, uh, about that, about, say, the role of financial conflicts of interest and the relationship between public health and individual decision making. So that's what we're talking about today. I hope that gives you a good uh, sense of, of what's at stake with these issues. And I look forward to hearing what you think on Discord or uh, in the comments of the video or in our live class. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next time.